Welcome, everybody, to this week's episode of Hard Hat Highlights, where Jay and I review some of the things that happened to us over the course of the work week. And then, of course, we like to scour the internet to look up headlines, things that caught our eye, and, of course, we like to put our spin on it to help add a little bit of levity to your day. Jason, oh, by the way, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, our YouTube channel, it's Glass Guy, G-L-A-Z-Z-G-U-Y. We'd love for you to subscribe, share, comment. Jay, how the hell are you? I'm great. How you doing? If I was doing any better, it'd be a sin. Oh, if I had a dollar for every time I heard that. It does work. Usually brings a smile to everybody's face. Yeah, that's right. Either they're laughing with you or they're laughing at you. And most times it's laughing at you. That's true. And I'm not opposed to that. Uh, people are... 31% smarter in a positive frame of mind, as you know. And um, I think that's a shortcut way of getting there. Let's get into what's happened to us this week. We had an interesting week. Uh, actually, a very good week. Uh, had some really good sales this week. Um, something that was really interesting to me, we've never had anything like this before. We had a contractor call us. Uh, we are doing a large railing job for them, and we provided product approval for a, the certain system that we're using. Those of you that don't know what that is, it's when you, especially when you're dealing with railings, um, maybe exterior windows, doors also have things like that, but in our case, railings, they do testing on these products to ensure that they can stand up to the elements, hurricanes, uh, windborne debris, things of that nature. So a contractor of ours called us and said, you know, the city of Naples is just giving me a real tough time with this. Uh, it says here in the, in the product approval that this is not certified to be used in windborne debris regions. So I directed him, there was a supplement on there. So what that means is they retested it again for, initially when they tested it, it was for California. They retested it again for here in Florida which included the high velocity hurricane zone. And it passed and met the Florida building code, both 2020 and 2023. Uh, this particular woman was looking at the, the initial and, and didn't look at that supplement. It was, that was my, my gut. The person was the, in the county. In the county. Correct, correct. So I directed him to the area. I, I snipped it and highlighted it and I asked him to send that back to her. So he did. And then she came back and she said, well, it says here in section three, it says it's not meant to be used in windborne debris. And then in section 5.4, it says it can be used in there. Um, so I'm not sure what's going on here. It was clearly an error and an omission when it got retested and the ICC, the governing body of that uh, decided, or didn't decide, but uh, accidentally left that verbiage in there saying that it was not approved for that. So that created a little thing. So the interesting part of this conversation was the first thing I said is, well, okay, well, there's a supplement that says it's for a high velocity hurricane zone. Which Con would include? Well, the c contractor explained that. And the person at the county said, or at the city said, well, high velocity hurricane zones and windborne debris regions are two different things, <laughs> which is true, which is true because not all windborne debris regions are high velocity hurricane zones, oh. but all high velocity hurricane zones are windborne debris regions. Exactly. Therefore, that that should have been yeah you end would, of conversation. She should have been able to make the inference that that was acceptable. But I understand. But just to give you an idea of the bureaucracy involved, they they're making us fix that, which is fine. It, that's an easy fix. Um, but in conversation, she said to the contractor, you know, I'm surprised you sent this in. Most people don't. And no one bothers with it. So, okay, so you're punishing me for doing the right thing. Yeah, it not only like punishing, like diving into the weeds of the details of it, but then follows up with most people don't even submit it. And we know that's true because for years, uh, maybe four or five years ago when we were talking about NOAs and product approvals, builders would look at us like cross-eyed, like, who the hell are you guys? No one's, no one's ever done that before. The stuff's gonna be fine. Yeah, it's kind of the you know the way it's always been. Yeah, the good old boys. Yeah, 
And then once that hurricane came up, now everybody's on tune. Because up until that point, they really never had catastrophic hurricane around here in southwest Florida. My, my initial reaction when I heard all this stuff, though, was, was A, now I know why it takes so long to get a permit. Mm-hmm. And B, do you not have anything better to do? <laughs> yeah, right. No shit. Right. I mean, you and I, we're, we're obviously busy. And speaking of being busy, we got taken away from our work a little bit this week. Uh, yeah. So we had a little situation with one of our locations. We Man. get torrential rains here in Florida. Everyone knows this. Um, every afternoon. Every afternoon. Like and clockwork. We've had a an issue with this certain location uh, for on and off for probably, what, past year, year and a half? Oh, I'd say it's close to two years. Okay. Leaking issue. Leaking through the roof. So... You would see wet ceiling tiles, maybe a couple drops of water on the on the ground. Landlord would come and send someone out to repair the issue. Yeah. Um, allegedly, the roof got redone, actually. And it's it's been decent for a while. But the other day, we had an issue where it was nothing we've ever seen before. It was like a waterfall. The amount of water that was coming in there was... Agreed. It, it was almost hard to believe. Like it, it seemed like there was someone up in the attic pouring a trash bucket of water down. Yeah, and that's no exaggeration. In fact, three ceiling tiles came down because it was holding so much water. Right, right. So we had to deal with that. Stop, stop what we were doing. Go to this area, clean everything up, and you know, first of all, while it's happening, we're standing there helpless watching this. Yeah. Uh, but we we got it done. Took away from our time and. You had addressed the landlord for that property um, because we've gone through this a few times. Asking, it's not just a few, like not to the scale of this, but this scale has happened at least three or four other times. Yeah. I've had enough. This is not what we signed up for in this particular unit. And it was time to, I feel like our kindness was being taken for weakness. And it was time to kind of draw a line in the sand which i'm known for doing and luckily having you by my side a lot i don't draw as many lines as i used to <laughs> which i think is fair but in this case my gut i was sick to my stomach over this i wanted to i wanted to kill this guy yeah so i wrote him an email basically started off nice a couple softeners you know i'm sorry to inform you that we've had a, you know a very bad accident here with the roof and it's caused a major problem for obvious reasons right and I says, I feel like, you know, we need to hold back our next month rent until we can assure that this is fixed. Because up until this point, he would come and they would put a patch on the ceiling and that would pacify us until the next heavy rainstorm. Then it would happen again. And because we're so busy, we kind of let it go. And I think he took advantage of that. And so what was the response you got from that? Well, there... The, two the first res- response you got. I, I don't actually remember the first response. So the the response received. Now keep in mind we're a good paying tenant, always on time. Probably I would say arguably the largest firm in this particular building, and the response generates was, the most traffic in the building. So when you have a when you have a strip mall of say eight or ten units, typically you like to have like a landmark business an in there, anchor store. an anchor store that's drawing in customers to help all the other businesses out. This is one of those businesses. Yes. So, so the the response you received was, if you don't pay rent, you're in default. Th- that's what it was, and which is a, triggering to somebody who's upset already. After a, a, a lengthy paragraph explaining what we just went through and why we want to do this, the first thing is if you don't pay, you're in default. With literally no, he could give two fucks. Like, oh my God, did anybody get hurt? Was any of your equipment damaged? You know, how many hours did it set you back? How can we help out? It was just if you don't pay, you're in default, which sent me to another level. The money was most important at that point. 100%. And so I said that, you know, it's it's sad that after this long email that the first thing and only thing you talked about was money. And then the next response was the one that really put me over the edge was, 
well, if you guys don't like it there, you can just leave. This yeah. was a landlord telling... I'll give you an early exit. Us to leave. In, in a economy right now where like people aren't fighting to get into this strip mall that we're in because if i'm not mistaken there's three or four other units that have gone vacant recently in there so this landlord is just more like a slum lord he just treats us like an absolute piece of shit just uh, any rational being would put themselves in our shoes and say oh wow these guys just had to clean up all the ceiling tiles and water and all sorts of shit god knows what got damaged you know, maybe I should be asking questions, you know, do you need help? You know, any anything. Being empathetic. Or or maybe even or the response should have been, let's get this taken care of first and then we can talk about that. Yeah. Not not admitting to doing it because right. I probably would have been able to back off of that if I felt like he actually gave a fuck. Well, yeah, but he didn't recognize that your At all. email was a heat of the moment email. And then there was zero empathy involved in that in it, just, it created almost a, a resent. I think the reason why we want to bring this up is there's a lot of times where we could be dealing with clients and sometimes they might say something to us that seems out of character in a conversation, but it just, it just goes to the fact that you never know what someone else is going through. And so it's important to take the necessary steps to kind of slowly unpack that without triggering the other individual because you just don't know what they're going through that's right um no. we will we will give an update to everybody on how this ends up happening rent's actually due tomorrow talk <laughs> to jared larson today told him to hold on to that check now while we're on that same subject <laughs> on the flip side did you happen to see the little league world series this past weekend i did i well i didn't watch the whole thing but i saw the important part so for those of you that don't know, yeah. team from Lake Mary, Florida, uh, very close to our Orlando location, mm -hmm. became the first team from Florida to ever win the Little League World Series. So in the history of the Little League World Series, no team from Florida has ever won. That's correct. Boom. Now, what was really unique about this is, I think it was Saturday, was the U.S. championship, mm -hmm. and it was against a team from Texas. And they Little League, they only played six innings. So they were down to their last three outs. And they so they were in the top of the sixth inning. Florida was hitting in the top of the sixth inning. It was a tie game going into the sixth. Or no, I'm sorry. No, they were in the I'm bottom sorry. of this. No, they weren't. It wasn't a walk-off? Uh, hear me out. Okay. Hear me out. So Florida going into the their last three outs in the top of the sixth was down by two runs. Oh, that's right. Yep. Seven to five. Yep. They pieced together five runs in the top of the sixth inning and went on to win 10-7. to seven. Now go on to the the World Championship game right? Uh, where they faced Chinese Taipei. And that game actually was, they had runners on constantly, and it was one nothing most of the game. They couldn't, they couldn't score. Finally broke through, scored, went to, ended up tying after six, and that was a comeback tie. Then they go to extra innings. Mm -hmm. So seventh inning is a normal extra inning. Eighth inning is like major league rules where they put a runner on second base. So you've got a good chance to score there. So they they get in, and it's still a tie game. Florida's up. It's the bottom of the eighth. And they get a runner on first. They bunt. Oh, no, I'm sorry. The runner, the runner was on second. It was the, the yeah. leadoff run. Okay, leadoff, leadoff man bunts to, to move him over. So when he bunts, he's running towards first. Pitcher picks up the ball, throws it to first baseman. Nobody's home. Both the pitcher and first baseman converged on that bunt. That's right. Which was a lack of communication. So guy from second comes around and scores. Now, I know you and I... Our competitive spirits, especially at the age, these kids are 10 to 12 years old. Right. The first thing we would be doing is this is a monumental win. We would be the Little League the World shit Series. Oh my God. Yes. And what was remarkable about these kids and kudos to them, they watched and saw what happened. And this isn't the first time they did this. They did this in the U.S. championship with the Texas team as well. They saw the reaction of the losing team. And these poor kids are down on their knees crying 
bawling their eyes out. And instead of going and celebrating with their team, they went over and consoled every one of those kids just to, you know, give them a good job and, you know, really make them, make them feel a little bit better. It was the most amazing display of sportsmanship, especially coming from that age group, because it's not really something that's learned uh, in most cases <laughs> at that point. Um, good job on the coaching staff as well. I would like to play the other side of it. Now, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm just, I would like to say it's amazing how far we've come where things have evolved and or changed. Because I don't necessarily think it's a good thing or a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Go back to Little League when I played um, at 12 years old. There's no way in hell that we would have ever, if I saw the other team crying after we won a, a big game like that, that would have been the highlight of my career. I was hoping for something like that. I would have never, ever have gone over and said, oh, you know, don't worry, you did a good job. Not even thought about it. Why is it, do you think, nowadays they're able to do something like that? What, because... I, I know people, used to, even now, they say, you know, it doesn't matter. You just want to go out there and have fun and win. That's fucking bullshit. When I was playing at 12 years old, nothing meant more to me than playing with my friends in a baseball, a sanctioned baseball game at Little League and winning you, almost at all cost. You're right. You're right. I and wouldn't I, have ever thought to go. And it, Again, I'm not saying I don't disparage these kids from doing that. I just don't understand. Well, that's what's so remarkable about it. Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't think you, you said, you know, nowadays. I don't think it's it's that. Well, had you ever is... seen it before? No. No. I'm very... Ever? I, not that I can think not of. Not at that level, not that especially. I can think of. And, and the thing about it is I, I understand we're saying, you know, we're kind of in this everybody gets a trophy yes. uh, time. Yes. But I, I, there's still competitive spirits, especially in teams that are that good to make it that far. And to see them get that far in on national television and do something like that, that was remarkable. I like it as it represents the United States, especially playing arguably our adversary in China. I believe this is technically like Taiwan, but... Oh, okay. Whatever. It's not the U.S. Right. So it looks good for us mm -hmm. um, on a national stage. But I know there will be people out there that will understand what I'm saying because that competitive nature, it plays to that old question. Let me ask you this question. If you were playing in a, a competitive nature one-on-one, -on -one, yeah. would you prefer the thrill of victory because you won, or would you prefer watching the other person's agony of defeat because you beat them? Is that even a question? Well, yeah, because there's a lot of people say, I play to win, and I'm doing it for me. I don't care what happens. Okay, well, not for me. I like winning. Yeah. To the point of watching the other piece of person know that I beat them. That's what I enjoy. I know Bryce is the same. And Salt in the wound. Yes, yep. absolutely. Yep. That's that's part of the competitive spirit. That's exactly what it is. A competitive and I've been fire. on the other end of that where, you know, I'm crushed because I got beat. And I think that's a good thing. I think it, it hardens you. It makes you want to play harder, learn more, learn from this, you know. Builds character. Absolutely. Absolutely. Speaking of character, mm. something a little out of character just happened last night. <sighs> Wednesday, yeah. So tell us about that. I just saw this morning um, the newly, not newly elected, the newly re-elected back in March mayor. What's her name? Uh, Teresa Heitman. Teresa Heitman was arrested for DUI. This is the mayor of Naples. The mayor of Naples. Now, I don't. I don't know in any situation where that would be acceptable, but because we're in Naples, we, we want to highlight this. And we do a lot of advertising via social media. We know the old saying, there's no such thing as bad publicity. I just don't know how this is a good thing, especially coming from the mayor. I mean, it's not acceptable for anyone to be drinking and driving, but you already know you're in the public eye. You have a huge constituency here that is looking to you to be a leader and show leadership qualities to help push along um, this county. And if I'm not mistaken, Naples is one of the most desired places to live in the country. Mm -hmm. 
What, I mean, what's your take on this? I feel that this was, this was purely an entitlement thing. I don't know, full disclosure, I don't know Mayor Heitman at all. But based on what had happened in knowing the position that she's in, um, I mean, everyone makes mistakes. I get it. But you're in this, this position where you make a mistake like that, the whole world's going to know about it. Absolutely. You've got enough people around you that can help you or call a fucking Uber. I was going to say, in this day and age, to be getting DUIs is just almost unacceptable. It's just lazy, especially with Uber. Well, it's... And listen, and... I know. I'll be the first to admit we we've all done it. We've all been there, and you almost feel like it won't happen to me. It won't happen to me. And in this case, I feel like it's a it won't happen to me because of who I am. Yeah, I I agree with you on that. I agree with you on that. And I'm anxious to see how this ends up because she was charged with driving under the influence. She blew double the legal limit, which I believe is one. The legal limit is 0.08. I think she blew a 1.6. So if she was no, that'd be no, they'd be, yeah, that's right. She was no point oh eight. It'd be point one six then. Point one, whatever it was, yeah. she was hammered, um, based on the math. Man, so, so that's that's a little something you saw there on social media. Speaking of social media, where we spend a lot of time putting out content here in Naples, and it appears that there's going to be much more content coming out around the city of Naples. Oh. So we just learned that Ryan Serhant, um, mm. who is big, probably one of the most influential real estate people, uh, influencers, um, mm. he's very heavy on YouTube especially, um, but he's got a good following on Instagram as well. And he uses that much in the way we do. He doesn't do, like, we only advertise on social media. We don't do any paid advertisements. I, I don't believe that's the case for him. But he does do a lot of a lot social media. He was on. He was on. This, didn't he start as on a TV show? He, he was in soap opera. He he started out as really? an actor, and he was in like soap operas and shit, and uh, in New York City. And then he became like a real estate mogul, um, all because someone talked him in. I, I shouldn't say all because of a big part of it was because someone talked him into starting a vlog, and then that kind of hmm. rolled into something else and more and more. But anyhow. Sirhan, his company, has teamed with a local group of realtors and they're opening an office here in Naples. Oh, shit. And so some of you may have seen this before. Uh, there's a show on Netflix. It was actually a pretty cool show. It's called um, Million Dollar List. Or no, I'm sorry. It was not Million Dollar Listing. It was um, something about Manhattan. Owning Manhattan. Yeah. Owning yeah, Manhattan. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that is his show. Um, it surrounds his firm in new york city and it shows them you know their their listings and they're you know selling and you know kind of day in the life of a realtor type of thing and um you could see it on there that they're very big into social he actually even put a podcast studio in in his office for his agents to use at their leisure to kind of lure potential prospects and um if you watch the show you'll you'll see that uh one guy didn't use it in the proper way and was bashing his teammates but that's a different story. Um, so anyway, it'll be interesting to see how that ends up here in Naples. Obviously, Naples is one of the most desired places in America to live. As a matter of fact, U.S. News and World Report just named Naples as the best city to live in in the entire United States. Oh, let's go. So it'll be interesting to see how that, uh, how that turns out with someone in a team like that that's really ahead of the curve. Well, if any of the agents are going to be podcasting in their studio and or want to come branch out and maybe do a podcast in our studio, we'd welcome, especially Mr. Ryan or any of your teammates want to come by the North Naples My Architectural Glass, we'd love to host you on an episode of Hard Hat Highlights. That's right. We won't bash you. No. Well. <laughs> maybe. Yeah, I wouldn't say we wouldn't. <laughs> so staying along those same lines with Realty. There's a couple here in Florida over in Fort Lauderdale that just bought their, what they believe to be their dream property. Um, they dealt with a realtor and purchased a track of land for $350,000. And the plan was for them to develop three homes on that land. 
uh, one for them and then two as investments. So there had been a, a covenant on that land where they couldn't build it. The, the seller actually went and got a letter saying that, you know, that this has been removed. Now they can build here. And so everything was good. Realtor said, yeah, no problem. We can develop there, you know, whatever. So they close on the property and then come to find out that the property is landlocked. So what that means is the only way to get through it or get to it is either by water or by this one road. This one particular road, though, is a private road that's owned by the other homeowners on that little island or whatever it is. And so it's it's private property. So they can't even get to their property right now. So they basically have $350,000 pile of dirt that they can't do shit with. And none of that came up. I mean, nobody on their behalf did any due diligence to find that out. Well, that's the egregious part about it is that the they were represented by a realtor who said that everything was good and they could build and this and that. Yeah, they could build if they can bring all their shit by boat. I wonder if or they air. actually knew that and was like, no, no, you can build. You can build because he's right. You can build. You like, could have everything helicoptered in and you could bring a barge there. But that's not realistic. You're sounding like Bill now. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Type <A. laughs> I'd be pissed. So what's happening? Is that going to a lawsuit? Uh, it's, I'm not sure where it's going right now. I, I would imagine it's going to go to a lawsuit, but they're, I'm assuming trying to find an amicable solution to it. Oh, my gosh. That's yeah. brutal. Make sure you do your due diligence on who you select as a realtor. Um, that that could be a big waste of money. All right, what else yeah, we got sure here? Yeah, make sure they're not just sitting on their ass and not doing anything. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of sitting on your ass, there was just a survey done um, by the British Journal of Sports Medicine. And they surveyed 12,000 adults over the age of 50 uh, from Norway, Sweden, and the United States. And what they determined with the survey, which this... Uh, I shouldn't say survey, <coughs> study. What mm -hmm. they determined with this study, which lasted 16 years, it was just completed and published, is that those of this group who spent a minimum of 12 hours a day sitting had a 38% more likely risk of dying. 38% higher risk of dying if you're sitting for 12 hours a day. Okay, let's just unpack that for a second. 38% higher risk of death, like when? Like we're all going to die. Yeah, than the average person. Ah, okay. Wow. Which to me begs the question, who the fuck sits around for 12 hours a day? Well, let's think about this. I've I mean, that's been, hard to do. Well, it is, but wait, let's think about that. Is it? There's been days where you and I have been computer jockeys, and mm -hmm. we sit behind the computer for an eight-hour shift. Th yeah. And, you know, we work out in the morning, maybe we work out a little bit in the afternoon, and then we drive home, sitting in the car, yep. and then you have dinner, you sit at the table, and then, you know, after you do your church, you might sit and watch television. So is it inconceivable to sit for 12 hours during the day if you work an eight-hour job at a desk, and then you go home and watch Netflix or on your computer for four hours? I don't think it's inconceivable. I think it's... Well, how many hours a day do you think you it's sit? It's rarity. Now, keep in mind, when we say this, we don't do that every single day. No, that's true. But you know who does? Who? Apparently, NVIDIA. You know the company NVIDIA that makes they've microchips? Been in the, they've been in the news a lot lately. Yeah. So apparently, they have a, a thing where their employees now are working at their, at their own um, choice. They're working seven days a week. Most times till one and two in the morning. And you ask why? Like, is the pay that good? And, you know, and the biggest thing they say why they won't leave is they're trying to get vested because this company is worth so much money that they, they, I guess, after a certain amount of time, they can buy stock at 15% off. And they're waiting for this stock to, for them to be vested and then they can leave. They just gave an example of a, a person who was there for 18 years and then they retired with 64 million in stocks. <laughs> I mean, that's not a bad thing, but you got to sit there and say, 
is the juice worth the squeeze? Like, to literally no. dedicate your life. No. You have to go, I think it's four years before you're vested. But then, you know, people obviously hold on because they can buy more options. I mean, that's, you know, you talk about work-life balance. Uh, that's in the news a lot, apparently, yes. lately. This is just unheard of, though. I love when I hear people that are obsessed about their work and what they do, but that just seems over the top. How do you have a family? No, you don't. Period. You have no life. None. If you wanted to start a family, you couldn't. No. And then by the time you get out, yeah, you got all this money, but who are you going to share it with? Zero. Yeah, I'm not a fan. Yeah. I need to start standing up. We have our desk go up and down. I stopped doing that. I guess start standing up more. Yeah, that's a great idea, actually. Yeah. Well, I mean, pay, not paying attention to the family, not being very mindful. Very cutesy. Very cutesy. Very demure. You and I were talking about that the other day. For those of you that don't know, this thing is all over the place. and We're seeing it with celebrities, uh, sports teams, even saw the White House do it. <laughs> this, this whole phrase, uh, very demure, very mindful. Very cutesy. And, and we were talking about, we're like, where the hell did it come from? It turns out it comes from this TikTok influencer. Yeah. Are, are you aware? Yes. She's got two million followers. Yeah. Yeah. So she, uh, her name is Jules LeBron. And so not, she. She's not very cutesy, <laughs> in my opinion. Her or LeBron? <laughs> yeah, either. <laughs> either. So anyhow, she she put out this video of her making, getting ready to go somewhere, apparently, and you know, said, I look very demure, very mindful. And people are just using this phrase everywhere. Everywhere. And it turns out this gentleman who is not even a creator, not even involved with, with anything, TikTok or whatever you call it, uh, his name is Jefferson Bates. He actually purchased the trademark to that before she could get to it. I never understood that. What does that mean? He he well, trademarked the, what? The he so in his case he trademarked very demure and very mindful. And he's done this before with he he this person seems like he's an opportunist. Yeah. Um he's done it with the Denver Broncos. Uh he he uh trademarked both Let's Ride and Broncos Country Let's Ride. And I guess the the rub is that when he has a trademark, then whatever kind of merchandise or anything is sold from that, I don't know if he gets a cut of it or if he has to, or if they have to pay him to license, license it, it. I would assume is probably the the way to do it. So he's making money by. Is purchasing he a lawyer? Because litigation has to be involved in all this. I I don't know what he does. That's I don't wrong. know what he does. It, but it's very opportunist. Now there is a a bit of a. A happy ending to this too, because there's another woman who purchased uh, very demure, very cutesy, which apparently is. <laughs> Those were the three things she said: very demure, very cutesy, very mindful. So she purchased this to block anyone else from getting, it and actually has signed it over to this Jules LeBron. Oh, which I thought was a nice gesture. I think the biggest takeaway from this is why the fuck are we talking about this? It's trending. I know, I know. I just didn't picture myself talking about things. Yeah, like this. I. You know, that's the wonderful thing about the internet now is, you just never know what's going to happen. So anybody out there saying, "Geez, I know the power of social media, but I don't have any following, and I know it's going to take a long time, and there's so many more people so far ahead of me," it literally doesn't matter because one post. And it doesn't have to be the most creative thing in the world. I mean, look at this stupid thing. Very exactly. demure, very mindful, very cutesy. Has blown up. Just like the Hawk 2 girl and, you know, the ocean spray. There's Every day there's one that goes off. Did you see Hawk 2 girl Haley Welch just made her first million? How? From all this shit that's happened since. She's made a million dollars since then. Now, now what are we on? Month three? That's right. It wasn't that it long. It wasn't that long. You know, and she just come out of a bar. I think I think it was uh, on Broadway or in, in t- Tennessee, yeah, I think it was Nashville, on Broadway, yeah. so- somewhere. And she wasn't even the creator. No, she was just right place, right time, said something, and that was it. Off the cuff, and it just blew up. So, yeah. again, if, you're, if you want that possibility to happen, you have to be involved 
by posting and creating on social media. You just got to put some stuff out there. And it just goes to show you, it doesn't even have to be very good for it to set off. Who knows what the algorithm is going to suck up and spit out, especially something like this. Very yeah. demure. Very mindful. Yeah. Very cutesy. And if you want to see us do that, make sure you like and follow, subscribe. And if you're looking to see a lot more cutesy things, very demure, don't forget to go to our YouTube channel, Glass Guy, and subscribe. And stay tuned for our next episode of Hard Hat Highlights. Until then, Jason. See you next time. See you next time. <laughs>